Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I started a little bit later just to see. Uh, there, a couple of you asked me to start maybe a little bit later. Um, it's really difficult with this time change, the daylight savings. And so, I don't know, it's hard to, I guess it's hard to please everybody. But maybe we'll alternate some days. Some days will go a little bit later and some days will go earlier. We'll figure it out. But today I have for you guys a double header we're going to get into a series from a few years ago called Channel Zero. And Channel Zero was set in Ohio, and this is why I wanted to cover it. I would not recommend watching Channel Zero. It's really creepy. But we're going to show you a couple clips that seem to relate to things that are happening right now. Now, before we get into Channel Zero, I want to get caught up on the series called Servant. Let's take a look at this. Now, this is weird because we were just talking about some breaking news yesterday about COVID rats. Remember that? Well, a few days before that, I had captured this scene that you're going to see next from, next from the series Servant. And there are literally rats. Now, listen to what they say about the CDC. We were just talking about this yesterday. Let's take a look. Uh, speaking of rats, Center for Disease. Wow, you've heard that expression like rats climbing the mast, maybe. Now, he didn't finish his sentence, but he said, speaking of rats, the CDC. So basically, he called the CDC a bunch of rats on this TV show, The Servant. Now, let me give you the context of this scene in the episode. Basically, as you guys know, the the series servant is about a nanny with like basically she's probably the antichrist is what you pretty much come up with you know after you've watched several of these seasons of this tv series i'm sticking with this series because there's a lot of very deep symbolism in it that reveals the enemy and these common themes running through a lot of these tv series and movies completely different producers directors and all this but the same exact themes and that's what we're trying to get down to the bottom of here this is why we've been sticking with servant the tv series now the context of this episode is that as the nanny begins to be pushed out of the family because they realize she's evil they they they're like we got to get rid of her we got to send her back to the cult and as they begin to push her out, she begins manifesting supernatural powers and she causes intense rains to fall upon the city. And rain and rats breed disease. That's the context here. Which is really weird because this is actually really happening in New York, or so they tell us, that these rats have COVID. So... Let's keep watching here. That's what that looked like. Now, you guys will remember this next actor here. Let me fast forward to this part so you can see this. This actor right here, remember in the previous episode, he had his voice taken away by the nanny. But his voice is lost just as he's looking up at some mold in the bathroom. The camera zooms in on it in that episode, and then he loses his voice. Now, it's the nanny that causes his voice to be lost, but the connection to the mold is what's important here. Now, he goes online and he researches this. He pulls up this web page here, and the web page says that this is some kind of paralysis. They call this a paralysis. Let's read this. Loss of speech and impacts of stress on phantom symptoms. Conversion disorders, a mental condition in which a person can become blind, mute, paralyzed, or experience other symptoms with no clear medical use. Now, what's weird about this is a lot of people that got COVID experienced, oh, I guess you can almost call it some kind of amnesia of smell and taste something happened to the nervous system myself included 
when I got the flu, right? Now, I don't know exactly what this is all about. This is weird. I've never gotten the vaccine, of course, as you guys know. And so I don't know how that happened to me, but it's happened to a lot of you as well who never got the vaccine as well. So something happened. There's something different about this. So let's keep watching here. What are you reading? Now this nanny is known for basically just creeping around the house. She knows everything. She's, you know, he's trying to research this. She knows that she did it to him, but she's not admitting it, right? Now, let's get into this other series. That's about all I had for The Servant. And we'll continue to watch that. I think it, the season's almost over. But let's get into this new series. Now, this is another series that a couple of you recommended to me. This series started in 2016. And it's called Channel Zero. Now, each season has a different storyline. The first st uh, season is called Candle Cove. And that's what we're going to cover today. It's about a creepy children's TV show that only children can see. And not just children. It's children from a group of friends from 1988. Now, of course, 88 is that portal time travel number isn't it and candle cove the name of the tv show is cc 33 isn't it now as the season progresses in candle cove channel zero the children basically are possessed by the tv show and they start killing each other and the adults then this happened in 1988 and it happens again in 2016 which is what this season is set to here is the uh all the different seasons in the wikipedia page here as you can see channel zero season one candle cove season two the no end house and basically the the series is about twins eddie painter and mike painter now eddie dies in 1988 or he disappears he's the dark twin 28 years later mike painter returns missing his brother you're going to notice the theme here this twinning the two spirits in one body mike painter comes back to try to solve the phenomenon that is repeating 28 years later after 1988 now that number 28 is very important as many of you know this is a christ number remember christ talked about his generations 14 14 and 14 14 generations from abraham to oh gosh i always forget this verse but anyway you can look it up in the new testament jesus tracks his lineage 14 14 and 14 generations and there's one that goes to the exile in Babylon, and then to David, and then to Christ. Now, 14 and 14 is 28, okay? Jesus would then sac you know, offer himself up as the sacrifice. Of course, that is the cornerstone of the gospel. He died for our sins so that we could be saved, essentially entering into the portal of heaven through his sacrifice, right? Now... What makes this interesting is Jesus' sacrifice in the 14 and 14 years seems to coincide with that moon cycle. The moon cycle, the 28-day moon cycle, as well as the menstrual cycle. And we did, we tracked this and we looked at this and we compared what Jesus did to pregnancy. Because we looked at the cycle, a woman's monthly cycle, and we looked at the seed coming out of the ovary, and the whole cycle of how that happens, and if the egg is fertilized, the woman becomes pregnant, 40 weeks, and you have a child. And when the child is born, 
First breaks the water, then comes the blood. Jesus was pierced in the side. First came out the water, then the blood. Or they both came out together, the water and the blood. You can look all of this up in the New Testament. For those of you that read your Bibles, all this is resonating with you. So essentially, Jesus performed a rebirth with all of the different markers of childbirth, didn't he? Except we're reborn in him, coming out of his side, just like Eve came out of Adam's side. So now hopefully you're seeing all the similarities. Now, there weren't just 28 generations. Jesus named a third generation, bringing us to the number 42. So 42 total generations. Now we've got studies on all this. For those of you that want to dig into this, it's very interesting. This rebirth in Christ that very few people have looked at. The 42 total generations from Abraham that Christ talks about, we figured out is the 42 degrees that a rainbow can be viewed at. Yes, a rainbow can only be seen at precisely 42 degrees. Now, what is the significance of the rainbow and how that connects to Jesus Christ? Well, what was the sign that Noah was given after the ark? After he was essentially in the reigning days and nights of 40 days and nights? The sign he was given was a rainbow. Childbirth, 40 weeks. Now that's 40 total weeks after the last menses. The 38 weeks is what we're always told by science, and that's true. But after the last menses, it's 40 total weeks. From the time that the egg originates in the ovary to childbirth is 40 weeks. And now you're seeing the connection. All of this is the wilderness. The 40 weeks in the wilderness. Or Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days. The 40 days of, of rain during the flood. The 40 years in the wilderness of the Israelites. After they passed through, are you ready for this? The Red Sea. That's the water and blood. What was Noah's floodwaters full of? Water and blood of the sacrifice of all of the creation that was killed. Are you starting to see? Are your eyes opened? I really hope so. Because this is some of the most compelling information. That God is real and he offered his son so that we could be saved. This is the stuff you don't learn in church. You're, some of you are hearing this for the first time. For the others of you who have heard this through the Body Code series, you have heard this. So, when you see this depicted in these TV series... It's mockery, isn't it? So, 28 years from 1988 to 2016, he comes back. Okay? And this is what happens. Now, what makes this show extra creepy is that it is set in Iron Hill, Ohio. Now, this is a fictional town. Iron Hill, Ohio. But here's the weird thing. Let's play this. There are many train references in the series. Now, there are no train derailments, but there are train mentions. When the railroad switched. What is that strange noise? What are you reading? From the rain, but a lot of migratory when the railroad switched from steam to diesel, that is what killed us. Oh, community, how kids are raised. 
Now everything's the Iron Hill. So you just heard him say when train switched from steam to diesel. I don't know what that means, but it means something. We could probably break that down, do a whole show on that. But that's weird, isn't it? He said that was it's a why it's just a random part of the script that isn't so random, right? This was 2016, you guys. Let's keep watching here. Now this is Mike Painter. He is the good twin. And his brother, who he had to kill in 1988 because his brother was the one killing all the children and parents. He's the evil twin. But then, for uh, 28 years later, the evil twin is starts possessing people again. And he, the evil twin wants to use Mike's body to repossess so that he has a body to go into. Watch. The Iron Hill murders never solved. Yeah. In 1988, in Iron Hill, Ohio, where I was born, um, five kids went missing. Losing a twin is like having a, a phantom. The last victim, the one they never found, was my brother, Eddie. You were identical twins. Hope you like the mushrooms. Now, what's going on in Ohio? Another animal attack. Now, we talked to you about this, and I told you guys that animals are losing their fear of humans. A good portion of you thought, oh, they're just trying to put fear in us. No, it's really happening. And it's biblical. Because Revelation says that the wild animals will attack people in the last days. This is the latest. This guy had a pet zebra. Almost bit the guy's arm off. This was on 313 yesterday. Circleville, Ohio. A man was taken to the hospital Sunday after a zebra attacked him. Here's the picture. I think they've got it on video here. There's the zebra. They had to put the poor zebra down. Zebra almost bit the guy's arm off. Now, his arm didn't actually get bitten off, but that was the initial report. This was in Ohio. Do you guys know where Circleville, Ohio is? Now, I've talked to some of you about the history of Ohio, the Native Americans, the Ohio Serpent Mound. We actually have a video on the Ohio Serpent Mound. And probably five years ago, and I'll put a link to that video, we looked at the Ohio Serpent Mound. And I told you that it looked like a snake eating an egg. In actuality, that is the anatomy of the fallopian tube swallowing the egg. Now, let's keep watching here because there's more. Because what are the odds that they mention mushrooms and fungus? Why would this show up in a 2016 series? Something that we're talking all about right now? Well, watch and listen. As one cop, this guy here, gives the female cop cooking mushrooms. And he's trying to basically get a date with her. Identical twins. Hope you like the mushrooms. Oh. Oh. Those were from you. Yeah, my... Look at this. This is The Last of Us in 2016 let's keep watching here remember coppers cops right you need the 5g copper to control the mushrooms it's all going to work in tandem together through the mycelial network mycology is kind of my main hobby so These are different varieties. So there's a uh, hen of the wood, uh, some golden chanterelle, and two different types of shiitake. Oh, that's sweet, but not, no, it's okay, it's okay. Sweet is a reference to the sugar that feeds the fungus. The script, everything is completely scripted. You know, I, I figured it'd be a no, but I, looks like someone didn't listen at the sexual harassment seminar. <laughs> Now, 
as I said, this is Mike the Good Twin, and he killed his evil brother to stop the murders that happened in 1988. He returns to the town 28 years later in 2016. Now, think about that for a second. Let's break that down. 28 years, that's two eights, right? So that's an 88. What is 2016? That's another two eights. Eight and eight is 16. So we have eight, 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 eight. Now, Mike can't stop the evil spirit of his brother who is possessing the children to start this killing spree up again. And he goes to visit one of the children who's possessed in the hospital. And she had tried to kill her brother with a meat hook. And he asks her about uh, the picture that you're going to see next. That she drew of the TV show Candle Cove. Now I don't show, I don't think any images or any video from the Candle Cove TV show. Because why would I show you guys a TV show that possesses children? That's just not good, right? There could be something in that that really does something to people. But I am going to show you the picture that the child drew of the TV show. Watch. Do you know what kid drew this? No. Why? Did you draw this? Now, Mike goes on to ask her about the picture. And he describes everything in the picture except for the railroad track. Which is weird, given the fact that trains are now derailing all over Ohio as we speak. And there's something weird going on in Ohio. Katie, do you know what this is? It looks like a pirate ship. And over here, it looks to me like a cave tree a cloud you were gonna hurt her I was gonna so really weird right now let's keep watching because here are the twins back in 1988 this is Mike and that's Eddie and here you really begin to understand that this is all about the twin spirits possessing the one body and all of that is happening right now they have to do several things to enable this right to enable this demonic possession that's taking over humanity this is why some of us just cannot we just completely cannot relate to the rest of the world this is why jesus said you will you are in this world but no part of it well there's been no time in my life where i felt more strongly about that everyone's caught up in the right left paradigm they're all believing in billionaire liars they really believe that a billionaire has their best interests at heart. They really believe that governments have their best interests at heart. They don't understand that the enemy rules this world. You have people investing in this world that is crumbling around them. They think gold and silver, storing up gold and silver is going to help them. Okay, like I can't relate to almost anybody because everyone's asleep and deceived. They don't understand that. We're supposed to keep our eyes fixed on heaven. That's what the Bible says. Not this world. This world is passing away, says the Bible. And it's only Jesus' kingdom that's going to work. Where there will be no more tears and sorrow and pain and suffering. The former things are passing away. And you have people who love this world. I mean, it's okay to enjoy life and enjoy nature, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who literally love this world. They're buying cars, new cars. They're talking about uh, their favorite TV shows that are all satanically based. And I just don't relate to those people anymore. They're literally living in the world and loving the world. Which is what we're told not to do. Why? Because the enemy will use that love of this world to deceive you. And this is why so many people went out and got the Pokemon sticker. Because they were deceived. Because they love this world. Because they think a man will solve our problems. They trusted the plan. We're not supposed to trust any man. We're supposed to trust the Most High and His Son who He sent for us. So here are the twins. 
And Mike begins to realize that his brother Eddie, when he says he's taking the children to Candle Cove, he's really killing them. He throws them off of a cliff and they fall into a tree. And they're all hanging there and that's how they find these children. Now the weird thing is, is that this is all about the bloodlines. Let's watch this part and I'll explain a little bit more to you about what this really means here. You were going to hurt her. I was going to take her to Candle Cove. We need to look out for each other. You have to stop to do this. You're my twin. You're supposed to be with me. Give me that. So, Mike tries to take the meat hook from him, and Mike ends up killing his brother in the scene. I don't show that. So, what is the significance of Eddie luring the children to this cliff, having them jump off a cliff into a tree? Let's see how many of you guys get this, the answer to that. What is the tree that he throws the children into? Now... The reason why Eddie, the bad twin, lures Mike back to Iron Hill is so that he can possess him. So that he can free his own spirit from the alternate universe that he's stuck in. And I don't show you this either, but the evil Eddie collects the teeth of the children as basically mementos of sacrifice. And then he wears them as his skin. And that's the only creature that he can manifest into in our reality is this creature covered in children's teeth it's pretty disturbing this is why i said do not recommend this series okay the first uh the first season was the worst probably it's a whole new level of creepy so what is the tree so some are saying the tree of good and evil yes that that's part of it but what it really is is the bible describes children as fruit does it not? It says, be fruitful and fill the earth. The Bible also says, the fruit of the womb. Okay? So, the children are the fruit. Now, why are children described as fruit in the Bible? And why would the enemy twist that to make it, to depict children as fruit in, in, uh, in these films? Well, it's mockery, of course, isn't it? And if you think about it, what is the fruit? The fruit is the new generation of a plant, isn't it? It's the fresh, shiny, new birth of the plant. And this is probably why God calls children fruit in the Bible. So, what you have here is the fruit hanging in the trees in Candle Cove. The children in the trees. It's, it's, it's pretty disturbing if you think about it. But they're all sacrificed. And so, it's a dark tree. It's the tree of evil. It's one of the trees of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's the evil tree. But literally, both trees are bad in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because it's the duality that we live in. That's what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is. This is why when Adam and Eve selected the tree, it was some kind of portal dimension. Now, what is a tree? On the level of... Let's think of this esoterically. A tree is so many things, isn't it? A tree is a series of events. A series of synchronicities. A series of actions and reactions. Branching out. To a different end. That's what a tree is. One example of that is a family tree. A series of actions and unions coming together, creating offspring that then create other offspring branching out. This is why they call it a family tree. And this is why you have a crown on your head. This is why you have limbs, arms and legs. This is why you have a trunk of your body. You are a tree. This is why we were made in the image of God, weren't we? Yes, we were. Now, nobody has seen the face of God, the place of Peniel. But why would they call it? Why does the Bible call it that? Because it's a pine cone from a tree. It is the origin of God, the, the first seed of God, I guess 
I'm, I'm, the words don't even do it justice as to what I'm trying to describe to you right now. Because it's so amazing. No one has seen the origin of God. No one has seen the place of Peniel. The origin. And maybe that's what that means. We only see his manifestation. The tree of life. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The trees of the garden. And all of this. So. Crazy times you guys. Crazy times. Hopefully you got something out of this live show today. Tomorrow. We're going to continue on with our Elvis Trump investigation. Now, several of you suggested that we look into the 1979 Kurt Russell depiction of Elvis. And it aired 123 days before Trump's 33rd birthday. The number 123 appears several times in this miniseries. It appears on the cameras that film Elvis on the Ed Sullivan Show, and it again appears on the manager's hotel room door at the end of the miniseries. What is this miniseries all about? Elvis and his demons. Elvis and his dark twin mentioned throughout the miniseries and now I firmly believe that the particular channel Jurassic Liars was on to something with these connections so we're gonna take a fresh look at this series tomorrow to see what we find now Jurassic and I got off to a rough start but I think we've been able to come together once he realized that I'm not out to poach his work I don't watch other channels to do our work we follow the Holy Spirit and sometimes those things overlap so this actually confirms his work so any overlap that you might see is not intentional I have not seen any of his decodes if he has decoded this miniseries Elvis I have not seen them and I intentionally don't do that because I don't want to taint our treatment of this and it's not our treatment it's the Holy Spirit and maybe this is what the two witnesses is about when two people from completely different backgrounds arrive at the same conclusions based on the Holy Spirit maybe that's the confirmation in the witness I've learned myself not to be upset at people who I feel have copied our work I used to get upset about it when our channel was super small I was like man these bigger channels are just copying our work and they're getting big and they're probably just watch our channel for content this is what I used to think and then I realized a lot of what we cover is stuff you guys send to me that you heard from somewhere else and I'll cover it and then sometimes it overlaps with other channels and sometimes what they're using overlaps with our stuff so I've learned not to get upset so I I hope he's not upset I hope he he understands his confirming whatever work he's done hopefully it will based on our treatment of this now I watched this whole mini series it was a couple two three hours long there's two versions of it I don't know which version I looked at one is much longer and one is shorter but I just picked up what was available out there on the web and that's what I watched but wow talk about creepy Elvis's dark twin <laughs> and Trump was 33 he'd be 33 years old 123 days and the number one two three appears twice twin appearances so we're gonna cover that tomorrow and what else we're gonna cover tomorrow we'll also cover a study that one of you guys found when you Google searched Trump's 2016 comments about 500 million dollars in microscopic camels the study that you found when you Google search that, which is what we'll cover on tomorrow's show, is a study about a bat camel coronavirus. I couldn't believe it. I didn't believe it. And several of you are like, Casey, Google search. Google search microscopic camel virus. And I was like, okay. And I Google searched it. 
and lo and behold let me i'll show you let's see what is it here it is oh no that's not it let's see if i can pull it up here i think i have it pulled up oh here it is this is what we're going to cover tomorrow you guys you can't make this up it's literally covid but it was back in 2016 and they say that camels it's a different kind of covid it's a mers covid but they say camels and bats originated this was this is what trump was saying was he hinting at something this 500 million dollars he spent to make microscopic camels that will, would get him through the eye of the needle into heaven is this what he was talking about well, i guess we'll have to wait and see that's tomorrow's show let's go into the chat see what's up with you guys you guys my mind has been blown for the last gosh we've been on a rip haven't we for several months i feel like i'm not even in this world anymore some kind of alternate universe finding all this stuff the alternate universe about it is that we're the only ones seeing it. Like, you would think that 20 million people would see these videos and go, what the heck is going on here? But it's this is why I say we're not part of this world. Because this, this is not resonating with people because they're fast asleep. It's already happened. The strong delusion. Could you imagine if we found all this stuff 10 years ago? 20, 30, 50 million people, 100 million people would have seen this and woke up. But now it's like the strong delusion is upon us. You can't make this stuff up. If you tried every single day. And that, that leaves me with a strange feeling. It's like, whoa. Like I look around sometimes and I'm like, these people are completely asleep. You show them something like this, and the first thing that would probably come out of their mouth is, Trump didn't say that. That's fake news. Completely asleep. They don't even see the blasphemy in a statement like, oh, a rich man can't get to heaven. Oh, I'll just make a bunch of microscopic camels. They don't even understand how blasphemous that is to say that. It goes right over their head. And that saddens me because what that means is, is that a lot of people will be lost. A lot of people will be lost because they will believe the lie. And that makes me sad. That makes me sad. So, let's go to the chat here. Good morning, everybody. Now, let's see here. Yeah, they laugh at us. They think we're crazy. They don't understand that nobody could make all this stuff up. Now, someone had said something about... I want to close the show with this. The word camel... There's two words... Okay, let's start here. Someone said that they saw a video that said that... That verse about the camel passing through the eye of a needle... That the word camel really wasn't the word camel. And that it really was rope not camel and that rope would be a more appropriate uh interpretation of that because that's what you would put through the eye of a needle like a piece of thread right and i so i dug into it and here's what i found the reason why the word rope and the word camel are very similar they're not the same word there's two different two different hebrew words one is rope, one is camel. The reason why camel and rope are so similar, C-A-M-A-L and G-A-M-E-L, is because rope was made from camel hair. And this is where you have to be careful when you go back into the concordances because there are a lot of words that are very similar to one another. Let me give you a prime example. The word nakash and the word nakosheth, they're almost the same word. They kind of mean the same thing, but different. Nakash is the serpent, nakosheth is the copper. Now we understand that the copper and the serpent, the bronze serpent, are very closely tied in together. But they're 
still two different words. You can't call a serpent copper and you can't call copper a serpent. They're two separate words with very similar spellings and similar meanings. So don't get lost in the context of the camel passing through the eye of the needle. Because if you just say, oh, that's just a rope, then you lose the entire meaning of what that means. Okay? There, because, and this is why you have to look very careful at these words. You can compare the two, just like we compare the copper and the serpent, but you can't interchange the two for their, own, for their meaning. So, that's just a little information on that. All right, you guys. Well, I think that's about it. Mind blown. Again, for me, anyways, I don't know about you guys, but I just pretty much get up every day and I try to hold on to the steering wheel, and he's steering the ship, the most high, and so, you know, um, we'll be back tomorrow with everything I just talked about. I'll put links to everything in the pinned comment. I love each and every one of you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe.